Well, hello. So, welcome to the Daily Racers Garage. Uh, this will be video number one. I am picking up something real special today. Uh, I have a spot in the shop cleared out and ready to go. I'm storing this for a buddy. It's a Tom Charles car. We did a bunch of racing with it. It's a great car. Um, but it's about to get a friend. And uh, I wanted to take you through my adventure. I'm leaving in a couple of minutes. Uh, everything's ready to go. I'm super hyped. I got all this floor space and I gotta fill it up. I gotta put something in it, you know? So, I'm gonna go pick up something special. It's about three hours away. Um, why don't you guys come along and see, uh, see what we get into. It's gonna be a super fun ride. So, let's go. Like I said, it'll be about three hours, give or take. Probably about 10 minutes or less for you guys. Um, I'm so hyped to show you guys. Here we go. <laughs> all right, so we are here. Trailer's all ready for loading. I'm here with my buddy from uh, Flying Brick Racing. Uh, he's got a whole ramp truck situation going on. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. He's also got these dogs who are, they're very nice. They're very nice puppies. They're just, uh, they get very excited. But this is it. There she is. That's what we're here for. Look at it. Isn't it awesome? Check it out. So my buddy and I bought this car together so that Justin right here so that he could go racing. And uh, well, now I'm going to go pretend to go racing. He took the car uh, and finished fifth. Fifth, fifth in his first runoff, which is pretty sick. But uh, he is on on the on the greener grasses here. I'm gonna take this thing and do something else. But he's got a cool project. Go check out his YouTube channel, Flying Brick Racing. Uh, he's got this massively long ramp truck situation over here. He's got two ITA proteges that he's gonna be loading up on this thing. Uh, one goes here, one goes on a trailer behind it. But he's going through that and doing some pretty cool stuff with it. That'll be pretty cool. But um, Oh, he's also been towing in this thing, which is pretty sweet. I kept trying to get him to put a roof unit AC in it, but he, he won't do it. So <laughs> he's got to find something else. But we're going to load this bad little bitty up and uh, see you guys in a second. All right, so I needed to get out of my buddy Justin's hair. I needed to leave so we can go about keeping work on his ramp truck, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a better look. My phone is dying because I'm a horrible person, so I'll have to show you more when we get back at the shop, but here she is. This is it. Fifth place in the runoffs this year. Um, easily top 10 car. It's reliable, it's steady, it's quick. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Uh, but yeah, so it's uh, it, it, there's some nice stuff in here. I, I like the half containment seat. It's got some nice little features. I'll give you a closer look when we get back to the shop. But for now, we're just going to keep on driving into the sun. And uh, I'll see you in about two hours. It'll probably be a second for you. Welcome back to the shop. It has actually been a couple of weeks since the clip you just saw. I didn't have a whole lot of time. Uh, I've been really busy trying to move stuff around, uh, so I didn't have a lot of time to take you through the car like I want to take you through the car, which is what we're going to do right now. Um, you may notice that there is some more space in the shop here. The Integra that was sitting in this spot is gone. That gives me tons of space to really dig into this and uh, hopefully have some fun with it. Uh, like I said, this is a 2010 Honda Fit. It runs in B-Spec. 
Uh, B-Spec is a class for cars like this, Toyota Yaris, the base model Fiat 500, Ford Fiesta, Mazda 2, Chevy Sonic, you know, cars like that. The smaller sort of, right now they're all hatchbacks, but the small subcompact sort of car. Uh, low horsepower, front wheel drive. I'm really, I have not driven this thing yet, but I'm really excited to get into it. It should feel really familiar to me. Um, and as the title says, I bought the most expensive race car I could. It just so happens that I uh, couldn't afford to buy a whole lot of race car. But this will be a lot of fun. They're really reliable. It's a Honda Fit. You can't go wrong with that. It should be a ton of fun. Uh, 2,500 pounds this car is. Uh, it should make 115 horsepower or so. These are really small numbers by today's standards, but if you want to go wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, it's very expensive. And frankly, this is the best shot at starting off. Um, so, we're going to take a look at this car. There's some features here that I've never had before in a race car, and I'm really excited to try them out. Uh, so, let's go through it. So I've switched to video by hand so I can move around some. Um, inside, you will notice that that door is not gutted, but this one is. There's, you know, rules are, you can kind of do whatever you want to. I've, I've not seen a whole lot of cars that have a door bar, but, uh, or B-spec cars rather, but I like the door bar. It gives you a little bit more room. It kind of expands the car into this gap, and I still have all the power windows which just cracks me up that a race car has power windows everywhere that it could that window these windows is all power uh, if you get in the car and you don't do the right things the car alarm will go off again hilarious to me uh, that a race car still has a, a working alarm there's no the the disabling all that stuff's gone but the alarm remains Feature number one that I've never had before is kind of a containment seat. I've never had a seat, uh, you know, your your head is going to sit right about here, and I've never had a containment seat. So this kind of keeps your head centered, kind of keeps you in place. You'll notice that the seat flops around a little bit. That's because the back, which we'll look at in a second, is not completely anchored. I've, I've been kind of adjusting it to, to, to myself. So I'm really excited to see that. Uh, there is... There's a net that can go right across here that goes to the, the, the rear hoops here. That'll kind of keep your, in the event of, all this is in the event of a crash, obviously. Uh, will keep your limbs from kind of flopping around and hurting yourself. Uh, so I'm pretty hyped about those two features. Uh, I'm really excited about this seat. Um, it's just an extra step of safety, which will uh, make me a little bit more comfortable. And we all know that if you're comfortable in a race car, you can send it harder. And that's what I'm looking to do with this one. So into the back, the cage, it's a, it's a full on race car. The cage goes all the way to the back there. Um, that's ballast weight, like I was talking about. They kind of use uh, sometimes weight, sometimes horsepower to try to balance the cars out. I think they do a great job, but that's the ballast weight for this car to kind of weigh it down some and slow it up. This is the adjustment that I was talking about. This is what allows me to slide the seat fore and aft. Uh, the seat is still sitting on the stock slider, so I can adjust it as I need to. And I'm pretty happy about that too. Most of the race cars I have driven in the past and been part owner of in the past have been more, uh, a little more gnarly, I'll say, a little more dedicated, I'll say, and having the normal seat sliders is just not really an option in some of those, but the, the stock sliders are still here. We'll go under the hood, like I talked about. B-Spec does not allow a lot of modification, but there is some. For this car, there is next to none. Uh, there is an exhaust system back there. It has the factory header. Um, it's got the factory uh, exhaust manifold. We're not allowed to do anything like that, but kind of from there back is, is all aftermarket and, and custom made and stuff. Uh, we're allowed uh, software. So this is a K tuner car, I believe, and uh, it's been the dyno once or twice. So I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with where it is now. If we get more modifications in the coming year, it'll have to go back, but for now, I think it's in a solid place. But this should all look familiar to you if you've ever seen, I don't know, a stock Honda. But you know, that's kind of, that's part of what makes this class attractive to me is it's not a builder's class. I don't have a lot of fabrication skills, even though I do have a fabrication area. I don't have a lot of fabrication skills, so I'm not comfortable with having to build a car, but this takes all that out of the equation. Um, you put tires on it, make sure there's brakes on it, start the car and drive away. Like that's what, that's what is attractive to me about this car. Um, it's running, it's got Carbotex on it right now. I have a lot of options for brake pads. Um, the stock, the, the brake components must remain stock. 
but I have a lot of pad options that I can play with, and so I will be maybe doing that. Um, that's a cool suit that I've not yet mounted in here. Uh, needs to be mounted. I get really hot in the car, so I'll definitely have a, a, a running and working cool suit. There is a full uh, fire suppression system. Uh, this class actually started with Pirelli World Challenge uh, as a pro class. And so a lot of these cars were built by pro teams and the pro class requires a, a fire suppression system. Uh, and so a lot of these cars have it already, which is really nice. Again, it's another added safety thing. There's a nozzle under the hood that you might have seen. And there's a few nozzles in here strategically placed to kind of help if fire does break out. Um, other than that, it's a pretty basic car. Uh, there is some suspension involved. The class runs Bilstein B14s which obviously this car has, uh, it wouldn't have it. <laughs> it wouldn't have been fifth place in the runoffs that didn't have them. Um, but that's really about it. Some, some coilovers, some wheels and tires, brake pads, and you're on the track, you're ready to go. Uh, the front sway bar has been removed. Um, that helps with kind of the balance, you know, front wheel drive cars are known for pushing, which they can. I'm told that this car does not really push a whole lot. So I'm excited to see what it drives, how it, how it drives. Uh, but that's pretty much it. That's my walkthrough. Uh, this season, I hope to get into some stuff with this car. I want lots of seat time, and it's cheap enough. <laughs> it doesn't burn any fuel. It's a Honda Fit, so it's cheap enough. I should be able to get a lot of seat time in it and get really comfortable with the car, and who knows? Maybe we'll go for a championship. I'm not sure yet. I'm not looking that far ahead. I'm just excited to have a race car. It's sitting here in my shop. I can get to it whenever I want to, and we're gonna drive the hell out of it this year. So that's the walk around. Uh, like I said, it's a pretty basic car. That's what I love about it. Throw tires at it, put gas in it, make sure it's got brakes on it, and send it. That's what I love about it. I'm really excited to maybe visit some new racetracks this year. Um, the name of the game is buckets of seat time. That's what I wanna get out of this car, is buckets of seat time. Uh, it'll go to autocrosses, it'll do time trials. Maybe it'll make it to a hill climb or two, we'll see. Definitely some wheel to wheel racing. I'm really excited to, to dig hard into this car and uh, see what kind of fun we can have with it. Uh, that's all for now. I can't promise when the next upload is gonna be. I'm shooting for a minimum of once a month if I can get there. Um, either way, the next video, there's gonna be another part that is a racer's favorite thing to do. Uh, so look forward to the next video and I will catch you guys then. Thanks for watching.